Alrighty. Well, today we're going to be talking about combinations and how we can use these to um, ultimately solve some probability problems. So first off, the definition of a combination is a distinct group or set of objects without regard to their arrangement. So when we were talking permutations last time, a permutation is a distinct ordered set of objects. Okay, so when we were talking permutations, if we had something like ABC and ACB, those would be different permutations, but this is actually the same combination. So when we think about combinations, we don't want to think about combination locks. Okay, because the order that you put your combo in makes a difference. So it's not really a combination lock, but it's really a permutation lock. Instead, what we do want to think about is food. Okay, which is a good thing. So when you think about um, your plate of food, Okay. If you order a combo number one, it's just a burger, a fries, and a drink. Okay, so you got your burger, and then you got your fries, and then you have your soda. Okay, now you don't care what order those objects are on your tray. It just matters that all three of them are actually on your tray. So when we think about combinations, again, let's not think about combination locks, but let's think about combination plates in terms of food. Okay, Now we've been dealing with uh, different ways of finding the total possible numbers and you can use the counting principle, you can use permutations, or you can use combinations. So the trick is going to be deciding when to use each one. So the counting principle is going to be if you have to put items in a specific order and a lot of times you're going to have um, elements that need to go in a certain place or they're going to be certain stipulations on uh, certain elements. For permutations, this is when you're going to be choosing a few items out of a larger set. And the way that you choose those items matters. So things like president, vice president, secretary, that kind of thing. And then combinations, it's going to be choosing a certain number of items out of a whole set but the order is not important. So just picking three people to come and play a game okay, out of a group of five. It doesn't matter what order you choose them in, it's just they're all there. And so let's go ahead and talk about some examples. So in example one, we're going to decide whether this is a permutation problem or a combination problem. So we have a group of five friends, and they're forming a club. The group will elect a president and a treasurer. In how many different ways can the president and treasurer be selected? So you need to ask yourself, is order important? Okay. Well, if you think about your five friends here, we got some stick figures. Okay. If this friend right here gets selected as president, okay, does that affect what all the other four can become? Well, yes, it does. So once the president is selected, now only treasurer is left. So the order that we choose this is important. Okay. Another thing to think about is all of these five individuals are different. So order is important. And then we have distinct items in the set. OK, so because order is important and we have distinct items in the set, this is actually a permutation. So this would be 5, P, 3. OK, so we're choosing out of five distinct objects and we're choosing three of them at a time.
Now, same type of problem here. Of the five individuals, two of them are going to be attending a meeting together. So now, just any of the five here could be chosen to attend the meeting. And we're going to choose two of them. So if this person is chosen to attend the meeting, okay, these four people still have a chance to attend the meeting. So because the order that we didn't pick this person then that person, it doesn't really matter. So this has to be a combination. Okay. So attending a meeting is not distinct. So the number of ways that we can choose this is 5C2. So this has to be a combination. Okay. So again, in the first one, order matters. In the second one, the order doesn't matter. So permutation combination. So we're going to go ahead and list out some of these permutations and combinations now. So we have the set A, B, C, and D. And if we want to list the permutations, this is what we did last time. So we can figure out how many there are. So remember the 2 tells us how many spots we have. And then the 4 tells me what number I start with. So we know we're going to get 12 permutations. So we'll take all the ones that begin with A, so A, B, AC and AD. Then we'll do all the ones that begin with B. So BA, BC, and BD. Then we'll take all the ones that begin with C. So CA, CB, CD. Then all the ones that begin with D. DA, DB, and DC. So there we have 12 permutations and the order matters so that AC and CA are different permutations. Now what happens in the world of combinations is these duplicates, order doesn't matter, so AC and CA are considered the same combination. So if we're going to rewrite the combinations for C2 we don't want any duplicates regardless of their order. Okay, So we'll do AB, AC, and AD. And now if we start with B, can we write BA? No, because it would be the same set of letters. So BA doesn't work, but we can do BC and BD. And now we'll start with the letter C. Can we write CA? No, because AC is here. Can we write CB? No, because BC is here. Can we write CD? Yes. Okay. Then we'll move on and start with all the Ds. Okay. Can we do DA? Nope, because we have it here. How about DB? No, because it's right here. How about DC? No, because it's right here. So we've already hit all the ones with the letter D, making six total combinations. Okay. So we're going to learn how to find these specific things now here in the form NCR. And what we're really going to have here is NCR is actually going to be the number of permutations okay, divided by how many items we're choosing factorial. Okay, So if we think about 7C4, we're going to think 7P4 divided by 4 factorial. And we'll write this first one out here. So 7P4 means 4 slots starting with 7. So 7, 6, 5, 4. And then 4 factorial 
starts with 4 and goes down to 1. Okay. When we multiply these together, we end up with Thirty-five. Okay, so let's go ahead and go straight to the answer here for letter B. Ten C five. So we're going to go ten and go out five letter or five uh, digits. So ten, nine, eight, seven, six. We're going to divide that by five, four, three, two. And we would use a calculator and get 252 here. Now, fortunately for us, we can also do this on the calculator. So let me show you how to do A and B on your calculator. And then we'll try a C there. Okay. So we want to do 7C4. And it's going to be in that PRB menu, same as before. So we're going to type in 7, math. Scroll over to probability, and now you're looking for NCR, so that's number three there. So 7C4, and sure enough, we get our 35. Let's try 10C5. So 10, math, PRB, NCR, 5. We get 252. So again, you can use your calculator to find these, but it's also good to know uh, exactly how you're doing these. So let's go ahead and find 9C3 together. Okay, I got 84. How about you? So again, this is finding the number of combinations or the number of different sets that we can make um, of nine elements choosing three of them with no distinction to their order or place. All right, so let's try some word problems here. We have eight colleagues staying at the same hotel. They want to go to a restaurant that's not within walking distance. There is a golf cart available that seats five. Okay, and that's a problem because we have eight people and we're trying to get into a golf cart that seats five. And we're going to be legal about this and not like hang off the roof. So it says, assuming that any of the eight can drive the cart, determine the number of different groups of people that can ride in the car. Sorry about the typos. Okay, so we ask ourselves, does order matter? It's got to be your first thought. Okay, so your goal is just to get to the restaurant. So you don't care if you're driving or a passenger, doesn't matter. Okay, anybody can drive, so that means we don't have to use fundamental counting principle, and this is indeed a combination. We're looking for groups of people to get on the cart. So here we have eight people, and we're selecting five of them. And because it's a combination, we write 8C5. So in our calculator, 8, math, PRB, NCR, 5. We get 56. So there's 56 possible groupings of five people that can ride in the car. So, you know, there could definitely be some discussion of who gets to ride. All right, our next question. It says an exam consists of six questions. Any four may be selected for answering. In how many ways can this selection be made? So what question do you ask yourself? Does order matter? 
Well, if we assume that all the questions are worth the same amount of points, does it matter if you answer question one first and then question two? No, because they're all going to get answered. They're all going to be scored equally. So this tells me that it has to be a combination. Okay. So there's a total of six questions, and we get to choose four of them. So it's 6C4. We use our calculator, 6, math, PRB, NCR4. Okay. So there's 14 different paths you can take, really, to answer uh, the questions on this exam. Our next question, here is our combination. I love Chinese food here because uh, you do get so many choices. So at Su Wang's Chinese restaurant, dinner for eight consists of three items from column A, four items from column B, and three items from column C. If columns A, B, and C have five, seven, and six items respectively, how many different dinner combinations are possible? So what we want to do here um, first is ask ourselves, does order matter? And again, this is the food example. Do you care how it comes on your plate? No, it really doesn't matter. So this is a combination. Now when we look at this, each column of the menu is going to have a certain number of combinations. So we have column A, column B, and column C. Now in column A, we have, let's see, a, a total of, let's see, five items. And how many do we get to choose from here? So we get to choose three of the items from column A. In column B, there are seven items. And we get to choose four items from column B. And in column C, there are six items, and we get to choose uh, three of them. So let's go ahead and find each of these. We want to start with our number five. We got 10 for that one. Okay, 10 combinations of column A. Thirty-five combinations for column B. And twenty combinations for column C. Now in this example, we get to choose from column A and column B and column C. So to find our total number of combinations, each one of these can be paired up with each of the other ones. So this now becomes a fundamental counting principle problem. And so we're just going to multiply 10 times 35 times 20 to get our answer. So there's a total of 7,000 different dinner combinations. So you could eat at Su Wong 7,000 times without ever having the exact same meal. And what's funny about that is uh, my wife, every time we go to Wahoo's every Wednesday, and you know there's tons of combinations you can do between bowls and tacos and enchiladas and she gets the same thing every every time for the last 10 years. So anyway, <laughs> just because they're there uh, doesn't mean you have to use them. But next time we are going to learn how we're going to take these combinations and apply them to probability. And today we're just going to stick with trying to determine when to use permutations, when to use combinations, and when to use fundamental counting principle to find our total number of possibilities.
Again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you later.